Hello Internet, uh, in this video, continuing on with our uh, Korg Electribe ESX1 uh, series, we are going to look at the part common section here. And these parameters are um, used to manipulate and modify each individual part. You saw me doing it a little bit in the last video where I was kind of changing the pitch and the volume of each, of each part um, to kind of suit um, my needs and kind of modify the sound to, to fit with the, with the sounds that are in my head. Um, so there's some really useful stuff here. This is actually the one of the parts that I uh, use a lot. Due, one of the sections that I use a lot during live performances to kind of manipulate the sounds as they're playing. Um, and there's some really useful stuff in here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so let's continue on with the pattern that we had before. This kind of garagey swing thing. And again, I'm just going to roll a one bar pattern. I'm really sorry if that annoys you, but. Um, that's uh, and there's no real need for me to sequence like an eight bar pattern here. I'm just going to roll on this one. Um, so uh, let's do this. Um, let's take each part individually. And at this point, actually, that that allows me to show you this kind of solo um, option. If you hold solo, all of your parts light up, um, and then you select the one you want to be soloed, and only that part will play. Um, until you hit solo again, at which point they all kind of spring back to life. Um, so let's make some changes to the kick drum. So I'm going to hold solo, um, hit the first um, part, and then press play. So we can just hear that kick drum. Now let's explore our options up here. Um, what have we got first? We have this pitch option. Um, this does something slightly different for the keyboard part, but for um, all drum parts in these first nine pads, it will just adjust the pitch in the way that you would expect it to and we can go I don't know if this is semitones I really don't know if this is semitones um, I've kind of I've done a bit of experimenting before uh, this value here is what I'm talking about you'd expect that to be semitones so like each uh, one is like a semitone but that's not a semitone drop for me uh, anyway yeah I don't know it'll be in the manual somewhere and I just haven't read it um, um, but yeah you can still drop the pitch and, uh, and increase the pitch by a pretty significant amount. Um, so yeah, let's just like drop it by a little. Cool. Um, we've got pan here, maybe something that you wouldn't uh, use um, on a kick drum specifically, but if you wanted to pan apart off left and right, then you could do it here. Um, I'm more interested in the, 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 the next set of values, so I'm going to kind of forget about that one a little bit. It speaks for itself. Um, really important one, um, volume. They call it level. Um, we can increase or decrease how loud something is. And again, that might be something you want to use live, um, in, you know, to kind of transition between parts and things. I tend to use this part mute option, which I'll show you before the end of this video. Um, but volume and level is just a, a, another way to get around that to kind of balance uh, and transition between sections or whatever. Balancing is the big thing, I guess, when you when you when you're actually just kind of using this in a songwriting perspective. It's just kind of getting everything a nice, pleasing balance. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna put that back up to like 100 or whatever. Uh, cool. Um, this next section, now, I'm going to put it back in this mode, actually. When you first load in, I'm going to talk a little bit about this, because this is really important stuff. Um, this is kind of like, a uh, well, it is an, an amp envelope, um, but you'll see here that we've got these two little um, symbols. Um, and they're both kind of the way that they're, they're two different ways that the amp envelope will um, interact with the sound. This first one, this which is the one that's applied by default to all of your samples, is kind of a very short, sharp um, gate mode, meaning that um, we can we can trim the kind of decay of the sound, but it happens very suddenly. Let me see if I can demonstrate. So um, this is linked to this parameter here this time parameter. So we can adjust how long the sample plays for, basically, um, in a very kind of primitive way with a single a single knob. Um, but let's do it. Let's, let's press play. Okay, so with this fully open, as in like all the way to the right with our envelope, EG time, envelope generator time at 127, it's kind of letting the full sample through. And as we reduce this, We can hear that the sample plays for a shorter amount of time. It's kind of gating it. 
I think of it as a decay time, but in, in this particular mode, it's more just like a gate. It just stops the sound. It stops it dead. Now, I... There's nothing wrong with working in that mode, and it will have its uses, I guess, but for, especially for percussive sounds, I tend to flip my amp envelope to this second cymbal, which has this more kind of natural decay time, decay sound to it. Um, it gradually releases the decay instead of it just being this, this short, sharp stop. Um, so again, I'm going to kind of, I'm, I've flipped it to this um, second cymbal. Uh, I'm going to increase my envelope time all the way. And then I'm going to reduce it. And for me, it's just a much more natural sound um, for percussion in particular. Now, let's just be super extreme with it here. So, obviously, you can turn what was once like a pretty full bodied kick drum into a very minimal kind of click sound. And you couple that up with your pitch control, you can start to get some really interesting sounds here. Let's put some stuff in. And again, this is a parameter I use a lot when I'm playing live, just to kind of uh, manipulate the signal bring some interest to the pattern, have something move in, so it's not just like a stagnant pattern. Super cool feature, kind of primitive in the way that it works, but still allows you for some pretty powerful manipulation of the signal. Um, do experiment with both of them, um, gate mode and this kind of natural decay mode. Um, but for me, again, this kind of this 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 curve works a lot better for percussive sounds. Um, uh, this last pot here, sample start point. I'm actually going to load up um, a new sample for this. So Shift Seven A. I'm going to part edit, and I'm going to cycle through to a sample called wherever it might be. Uh, birds. Um, this is, and I'm going to have to put it in here. Um, this is a sample. Of it's a kind of it's a field recording. It's a field recording of of, of um, you know a walk that we took in the countryside somewhere. Uh, pretty brimming this this forest brimming with birds. Um, it's a sample just off my phone. I really liked it. There's lots of activity on it, and I thought it was it would be cool to kind of throw it on the machine and see how to manipulate it. And it's quite a long sample, um, which uh, you know. Without this, um, without this particular parameter, I wouldn't be able to take advantage of this this sample's length. This um, is a sample start point. Uh, let's press play. Cool. So we can hear it. I've put it in on the first beat of the bar, and we get that. Let's pitch it down. Oops, no. Let's leave it up so we get some of this stuff in. Cool. Um, now, as I move this sample start point, it allows me to, to, to start the sample at a, a, a point further in time, meaning that I can access quite a long sample um, and keep it at the same place in the sequence as well. So for every kind of notch that I move here, we're going to get a different set of sounds because the sample's pretty long. That sounds pretty cool. Kind of catching a weird point, the sample start and sample end, so we're getting that little pop. Sounds pretty cool. Let's throw the kick back in, I guess. Oh man, I lost it. Why? There we go. Oh, I'm soloed, right? Let's get rid of this stuff. Um, love using kind of wildlife sounds, especially birds, man. Um, they've got this musicality um, that's super usable. It's got this texture behind it as well, like the wind and the water or whatever. 
Um, and then when we go ahead and start modulating cutoffs for filters and things like that, you get some really interesting sounds out of this. But yeah, again, this is something that I would use live to kind of cycle through a variety of sounds, all contained within a single sample. Cool, I'm just having fun now. Let's stop that. Um, this sample's super long, so let me stop that. Cool. Okay. There are some other options here. Um, we've got this roll option that I looked at before um, in the previous video. Let's just go back over that. Let's um, solo this rim shot up. Um, I'm going to select my rim. I'm going to hit roll and then press play. Um, and it's, it's I, I kind of likened it to like a drum flam. Um, it repeats that note. Um, we can change the roll type here, if you remember, to play a different amount of rolls. Uh, that can be pretty cool. Let's hit reverse as well. I'm not going to have much joy with this reverse unless, there we go. Um, for this reverse to work, if you feel like it's not, usually it's because your decay time's super short, so just increase your decay all the way, maybe put it back in that mode as well. But reverse does what it says on the tin, it takes your sample and it reverses it. Maybe if we, let's try something like this, so let's put them there, um, let's have the same sample on this one. Let's get out solo. So I've got the one kind of rim being reversed and then the other one hitting. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of um, reverse drums or whatever, but still quite an interesting sound. Um, and lastly, we've got these effect sends here. Now, I'm actually going to dedicate a full video to effect sends. Um, and uh, basically, when you hit these, it will send that particular part to the effects chain here. But I've, I've got a whole video dedicated to that, so I'm going to leave it for now. Um, the very last thing to say here, and I'm sure you've noticed this as we've been working. Um, let me just get some stuff back in. Um, yeah, each of these um, parameters are specific to a particular part. They're not global. They don't affect all sounds at once. So the changes that I make to the kick aren't uh, taking place on the snare, for instance, or the hi-hat. Which is obviously really important for you to be able to manipulate individual sounds and not kind of for those things to happen on a global level. Awesome. You can see what sort of fun you can have with it um, in a songwriting um, scenario uh, and in particular in a performance scenario. Um, these limitations, I mean, this you know, there's not a lot on this box at all. There's not a lot on this machine, but that's good. Limitations are an awesome thing. They get you to think creatively about the basics like pitch, volume, um, you know, and, and, and very basic amp envelopes. Um, for me, that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, have fun with the stuff that we've just looked at, um, and uh, we're going to move on to looking at the modulation section. I think we're going to do the filter and the mod in one video. We're also going to look at the effects in another video, and then maybe I'll do one more that's kind of, um, I don't know, some tips and tricks or whatever, just some kind of funky little things that I've um, come across in the few years that I've been using this machine. Uh, cool, hope that's helped guys. Peace, peace.